Welcome to the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation's CF Education Day webcast, Germs and CF at School. This webcast is sponsored through unrestricted educational grants from Gilead and Genentech. I'm Eric Conger, your host. During this webcast, I'll ask the experts of CF germs what can be done to keep people with CF healthy at school. To learn about CF germs, nutrition, how to partner with your care center for improvement, and the latest in CF research, watch an archived webcast on the CF Foundation's website. Joining me today are Drs. Lisa Saman and John LaPuma. Lisa is a professor of pediatrics, a specialist in pediatric infectious diseases at Columbia University Medical Center and the hospital epidemiologist at the New York Presbyterian Morgan Stanley Children's Hospital. John is a professor of epidemiology and pediatrics and the director of the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation's Burkholderia Cepatia Research Laboratory and Repository at the University of Michigan, Ann Arbor. Welcome, Lisa and John. Thank you. Thank you, Eric. Before we begin to answer some specific questions, John and I wish to emphasize that infection prevention and control recommendations have to be balanced against the quality of life for people with CF and their loved ones. Thus, recommendations for schools are guidelines for infection prevention and control practices to reduce the risk of children with CF getting germs from their classmates without cystic fibrosis or from another child with CF should they attend the same school. But let's remember that each school setting is different, and what might work in one school might not be feasible in another school. Sure. All right, my first question is, what can schools do to lower the risk of uh, getting germs? So we wish to emphasize that a family is not obligated to tell their school or their daycare center or their university the diagnosis of CF, nor what the respiratory tract cultures have revealed. Nonetheless, the CF Foundation does recommend that school personnel are informed about the diagnosis so that they can be educated about cystic fibrosis and so that they can help to make accommodations for the student with CF. Can more than one person with CF be at the same school? Yes, they can, but we would recommend that two children with CF not be in the same classroom or in other rooms at the same time. For example, gym, recess, lunchroom, uh, children should be scheduled at different times for these things. And we emphasize that working with school personnel and educating them would really help to make these accommodations. Well, if there is more than one student with CF at a school, what, what should be done to minimize the spread of germs in the classroom? Well, again, we recommend separate classrooms, but we recognize that there are times where students have to be in the same room sure. and use the same space, art room, for example, computer room. And in those situations, we would prefer that they're not in the room at the same time and that the desks are cleaned so they're assigned at different times to different desks. And again, schools should be able to accommodate this if we are able to work with them. Can I add something, Eric? Sure. The other principles of infection control that we really emphasize are hand hygiene and respiratory hygiene. And again, I want to emphasize that these practices should be done by all. So for example, everyone should practice hand hygiene. And that can be done with either plain soap and water, or you can use alcohol hand rub. And it's important to do it for a long enough period of time. So for soap and water, we recommend either singing the happy birthday song or reciting the ABCs. And then for the use of alcohol, we recommend um, 20 seconds. And that really means covering the whole surface of the hand, all the fingers, and the nails. And then similarly, we recommend respiratory hygiene for all. And this is a practice that keeps everyone from getting ill. That would include the other students, the teachers, the friends of the child. And what that implies is that when you have to sneeze or cough, you cover that. You actually cough into a tissue, and then you promptly discard the tissue. And then, again, perform hand hygiene because your hands have now touched the infected secretions. And then another very important principle that John and I are both very big believers in is getting the annual flu shot as well as routine vaccinations. And schools are very, very proactive for their students with regard to hand hygiene, respiratory hygiene, and the flu vaccination. Well, outside the classroom, how can we keep kids from using the same bathroom or the same drinking fountain? 
Well, this re will require education of the children and of uh, the personnel, as we said earlier. And this can be done. The children can be assigned to different bathrooms, different drinking fountains, uh, or they could take bottled water to school. Well, what about uh, going to the office for medications? Should, should they go to the same office if they're ill, or what can be done about that? Well, again, with some advanced planning, this can be accommodated. We can assign children to go to different locations to take their medications. Uh, if we can get good cooperation with the school a nurse, different times can be scheduled. If they need to be in the same room, the nurse can clean uh, again in between their visits. So all of these things are quite doable if we engage in the school personnel. And generally, they're very accommodating to these sorts of things. You can see, Eric, how integrated the families and the students and the school personnel have to be in order to have this work. Now, what about uh, uh, pep rallies and assemblies? This comes up frequently. What can be done to reduce the risk of germs there? Well, this question um, reminds me to emphasize that we really can't anticipate every single potential situation that may occur within the school where two children with CF both attend. And remember, when we started this topic, we talked a lot about balancing the quality of life with infection prevention and control practices. And I think we have to help the school personnel achieve the balance between educating and socializing their students and infection prevention and control practices. So to have a successful school experience, children have to be part of their school community. So outdoor events are safe for children with CF as long as they're separated by six feet. And this is the six foot rule that we've been advocating. But indoor events are clearly more challenging. But if they take place in a very large auditorium, such as the pep rally example that you gave, children should be able to be separated as far apart as possible and use different entrances and exits when they enter the auditorium and leave it. All right, so who can parents or uh, schools or people with CF themselves contact if they have questions? Their CF care teams at an accredited CF care center are very, very knowledgeable about infection prevention and control. All right. Well, thank you very much. Well, as Lisa said, please partner with your CF care center to learn more about how you can reduce the risk of your child or yourself getting germs. You can find more information to help schools learn more about CF on the Foundation's website under Living with Cystic Fibrosis. This concludes the CF Foundation CF Education Day webcast. I'd like to thank you for watching, Lisa and John for answering the questions, Rick Vasta and the technical crew, Melissa Chin, Genentech and Gilead for the unrestricted educational grants, and the CF Foundation for making this broadcast possible. Thank you.